You know, I, I've been working with kids for over 30 years, and um, I have been working and giving my life to developing young people into great people. And over the 30 years that I have been working, I have worked in the church, I've worked in the university, I've worked in the school, and I've never had an opportunity to work in the community so that I could reach more kids. And um, when I started Unity Performing Arts 10 years ago, that opportunity was presented to me to reach kids from all backgrounds, from all ages. The youngest in our program is six. We have kids from every zip code in the Fort Wayne area. Every zip code. We even have some kids from out of the zip codes of the Fort Wayne area. We have some kids from Angola. We have one kid from Chicago. Our program has proven that you can bring people together from different backgrounds, but you have to want to. So what I have done over the years is created a, an environment that develops kids. And I want to share that with you. My first question to all of you, when you look at a child, what do you see? When you think about that question. When you look at a child, what do you see? That's one answer. Innocence. Innocence. Another one? Unpredictability. Unpredictability. Someone else? Potential. 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 Like you. <laughs> yeah. Dream. Dream. What else do you see? Anyone else? Creative. Creative. Fearless. Fearless. God. Who said that? God. Energy. Energy. And it's amazing how much we see, but we never invest in that. We see future, but we only deal with the present. Isn't that amazing how we don't deal with children like they're the future? We don't invest in kids like they're the future. We deal with children like they are today. So when I look at all of these wonderful young people, I see the future. And that's how I invest in them. Because how you see children is going to determine how you invest in them. You know how much we invest in our children? We build jails for them. It costs $240 a day to lock a kid up. And then we build a $35 million facility that they have to be locked up in. That's seeing our future. I believe if we switch that mentality and, and, and develop kids literally like they're the future, this is the future. What do you see up here? You see one race? I can't hear you. No. no. You see one age? No. What do you see? You see the future because kids don't see color. So, my philosophy is reach kids first and then teach them. Reach them and teach them. And this is how I implemented this program. I'm going to share with you the six R's of youth development. And I'll go through them real quickly because I know that you don't have time to listen to a Baptist preacher son. Because <laughs> I could take you there, I'm telling you. <laughs> There. Now, don't tell me you've never been in a Baptist church before. We got a hundred of them in Fort Wayne, so if you've never been there, you're missing out on something, I'm telling you. The first R is relevant. Relevant. A developer has to be relevant in order to reach the developed or the person they're developing. And relevant establish the connection that you're going to need in order to attract the person. And what I mean by relevant, a lot of times we create programs, we create organizations in our community that don't, are not relevant to young people, but we're tell, telling young people at the same time, this is for your future. Even education is not relevant in a lot of cases to kids. Uh, I believe organizations, churches, and even programs need to include kids in that process when you're developing relevant. If you're not a relevant person to kids, guess what? You won't inspire them. 
If you're not a relevant parent, you won't stimulate them. You won't even be effective. Your, your results will be non-effective. And kids right in your home that you literally are not relevant to. Our next R is relevant, relate. Establishes the communication line. When you learn to relate to a child, now the communication line is established. And now you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. And some of you say, well, I can't ever talk to this kid. This kid doesn't listen to me. Can you relate to the kid? Have you demonstrated to the kid that you are concerned about them? Their, their concerns, their pains, their problems. Do you talk to children? Do I talk to you? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> I got me an audience whether you want to act like <laughs> the, these young, the young people have access to me 24-7. They can text me. They can, they can call my cell phone. They can Facebook me. If they need to talk. That line of communication is established. Now, that line of communication is established just to give you the ability to speak into their life. It doesn't really give you the approval. The approval comes in the next R, real. When a child determines that you are real, you're authentic, you are the real deal. Everyone say, real deal. Real deal. Don't act like you don't know how to say that. Because that's how children talk. You gotta learn how to talk like kids. You gotta learn how to understand their language. You gotta learn to understand their vernacular. You gotta understand their nomenclature. You have to understand their codes. You know, what, what, what was that code I learned? <laughs> fried. Fried? It's polite to fry. Fried. You ever heard of fried? Now, in my day, fried meant what? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it meant chicken, but today, when a kid says that you're fried, what does that kid say? You're off the hook, you're crazy. <laughs> you have to understand that. So when the kid does something crazy at home, say, you're fried, kid. <laughs> and when you talk to the kid in that language, you begin to establish communication. Oh, mama, how did you know that? Mom, mom, where'd you get that from? Well, learning how to be authentic with a kid is, is difficult because sometimes parents and adults want to act like you're something you're not. So when a child senses that, I tell you, guarantee you, they will, they will point you out. You ever heard a kid say you're fake? When a kid says you're fake, guess what? You don't have to, listen, if your wife tells you you're fake, you can play that off. <laughs> if your husband says you're fake, you can play that off. If your boss says you're fake, guess what? You can play that off. But when a child, your daughter, your son, your student calls you fake, you can't play that off. Because guess what? You can't go any farther with them. The moment they sense that you're fake, you're done. So, you've got to be real with children. You've got to be trustworthy. You have got to be somebody they trust. My next R is respect. This establishes here the, the sense of value. The kid feels important to you. You respect the child. You respect the teenager. You respect the student. And the student understands that they are important. When you respect a child, you also respect the child's environment. You know, parents, when you get to cussing and arguing with each other, or brothers and sisters that are older get to talk in any kind of way, and you know that a child is in the room or somewhere near, guess what you do? You immediately stop. Why? Because you respect the environment of the kid. And you say, ah, let's finish this tomorrow. How many adults finish arguments tomorrow? <laughs> not too many of them. But a child should not hear you doing the same things you're telling them not to do. A child should not hear you 
doing the same things you're telling them not to do. And they should definitely not see you doing the same things you tell them not to do. Respecting them gives them a sense of how you hold them in high esteem. You treat them like, for instance, if I hear one of my kids want to be doctors or lawyers or I always call them judge or doctor right now because I'm treating them with the same respect that they've already achieved that dream. Not waiting until a kid becomes successful, then you want to go call them. You know how we do. We find kids who are now great professionals, and we just, oh, I knew that kid. <laughs> and that kid says, ah, they're fake. I never knew them. But when you respect a child, you hold a child in high esteem. And my next R would be, once the respect is established, now responsible. You now establish to the child the capacity to now pay attention to every obligation and task and role that has been assigned to them. Now, how do you show a child responsibility <coughs> if you are not responsible? So a kid has to see, first of all, that a responsibility is something that really is lived. A child needs to see a parent taking care of obligation. A child needs to see a parent taking care of business. You know, if the lights are being cut off at home and we're outside and we're not, this, the car's taken, the phone, cell phone's cut off, everything is in total chaos, how is a child going to understand being responsible if they don't see it in adults? So once you establish that sense of a responsibility, you give that child tasks, you give that child assignments, and then you see that that child achieves those. Now these are all of the things that we do in UPAP step-by-step -step process of developing that kid from a child to a leader. And the next and final R is reliable. Now this is a really big problem. Sometimes children cannot rely on adults. We come in and out of their lives. We're here today and we're going tomorrow. And kids are wanting to establish some sense of assurance that you can be what? Counted on. Can I be counted on? Yes, yes sir. sir. I don't just say that. <laughs> can I be counted on? Yes, yes sir. sir. Once they establish that, then once you bring all of these R's together, what's the first? Real. 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 I got you, didn't I? What's the third one? Real. Real. And the fourth? The fifth? Third? Got you, then. <laughs> and the last? Reliable. Being reliable. You bring all of these together in the right pot, and I call it the cake batter syndrome, the cake cook cake syndrome. You know, I say a kid is a kid is in the in the bowl, <laughs> and you are putting a little bit of relevance, mixing it up, a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> responsibility, mixing it up, and you're putting in a little respect in that cake, mixing it up, and you put a little. <laughs> real, a little real, and that truth and trustworthiness. We put a little bit of what? Reliable. Reliable and a little responsible. responsibility there, and then you mix that cake up. And by the time they're 17, that cake is poured in the pan. By the time they're 18, the cake is put in the oven. <clears throat> by the time they're 19, the cake is baked. By 20, you put an icing on it. And you're determining this how this cooked cake taste. A lot of us don't like the cake that we're tasting. Why? You didn't put the right ingredients in it. You forgot the eggs. <laughs> I like that one. And, 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 and what are cooked cakes? What are cooked cakes? Yummy. Uh, what? Adults. Adults. So once that cake is cooked, they become an adult. And you can't put any more ingredients in it. But if you 
as a developer, how many of you have children? Good. That's wonderful. Now, as a developer, if you take all of these ingredients, put them in, you will create one of the most effective and powerful relationships. That will happen. Listen, this, this relationship will evolve from a subordinate to an equal. In other words, that child now will be eye to eye with you. Instead of just calling you mom or dad, it'll be almost friend at an adult level, at a level where you see each other equal. And when that happens, that's a meaningful relationship that will last a lifetime. Thank you so much for listening to me.